So this is KS Synth. It's a CarPlus Strong synthesizer. Um, I didn't actually think CarPlus Strong could be tuned um, with the current delay line setup, and it, it can't, kind of. Um, but this comes pretty close to maintaining pretty good tuning over a few octaves. So I'm just going to play chromatically. Let me change some settings. Turn the timbre up. Um, so across a, a few... Uh, octaves, it seems to hold its tuning not great, but pretty well. Um, I'm sure someone can improve on this uh, in, you know, a future iteration. But it was good enough, and I liked the sound of it enough that I decided to publish it. It's a three-voice synth. Um, so you can play chords, although with the tuning you might not want to. Let me amp up the decay. The real issue with the tuning is that um, you can tune to octaves, and those seem pretty good. It's getting the even-tempered notes um, between to line up with what they're supposed to. That's a little off. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, the controls for the synth across the top you have... Um, controls for the noise exciter. I've named them things that I, I thought were evocative and might point you in the direction of how they could be used rather than, you know, what they do. But Metallicity controls the envelope for the noise impulse that's generated uh, when a, a note is played. Um, so if you turn that up, more noise is passed through the circuit and it gets, I think, more metallic sounding. Um, firmness is actually an aliaser that follows the, uh, um, noise source, and it, it really does, you know, the, the more, um, the higher the aliaser frequency, the more high strung it sounds. As you turn that down, it gets a little bit more warm and, and rubbery. A lot of these controls are very interactive um, and will reproduce some of the same uh, timbres. Tautness is uh, a the resonance on the filters that control the um, velocity. So it's velocity sensitive. If you don't want to use velocity, there's a bypass for velocity. Um, but the velocity can... add a performance element to it. Um, so that's the exciter level. Uh, Car Plus Strong Synthesis is achieved by um, a delay line that, that receives a noise burst or a, a single cycle uh, waveform, and then it it uses the regeneration circuit of, of what is essentially a comb filter um, to create sort of string uh, 
percussive uh, plucked sounds. So these controls, the blue controls, control the Carpla Strong um, string, so to speak, directly. The decay is the feedback loop. depends on the settings it, it will ring out for a very long time or it might actually begin to oscillate and grow in amplitude so it's something that you, you kind of have to uh, balance against other things the timbra which is controlled by the mod wheel of a connected MIDI controller as well as uh, this control on the front is the filter in the feedback loop. When it's low, uh, everything is more percussive and, and sort of uh, muted as it goes up. Uh, things become more harmonic. Uh, sharpness is the resonance of that filter. I'm not going to mess around with it too much, but uh, it works again kind of like tautness and firmness to either sharpen or, or mute the sound. Uh, they all do something slightly different, but it's all in sort of the same realm. Uh, buzz is a noise modulation of the, the delay line. Um, which can add noise, as you might expect, to the sound, but it can also um, sort of warm things up a little bit. Uh, and then stereo spread is just for the output stage. Um, there's a stereo spread that, that sends this into stereo, uh, and the pitch bend range can be assigned here. Um, I have it set to an octave. But you could set it to something higher or lower than an octave. And that's the patch. Um, I think it sounds really good being sequenced or arpeggiated from an external controller. I know a lot of people use Keystep and, and other uh, devices that have these functionalities. So I thought about building a sequencer into this, but because this uses multi-filters, if you watch the CPU limit, I'm adjusting the timbre, which adjusts the filter frequency of the multi-filter in the feedback loop. Um, the CPU jumps quite a lot, and I wanted to make sure that it would function smoothly in all circumstances. So I didn't put a sequencer in the patch, uh, but you could certainly use one of the voices. These are what the voices look like. Uh, to sequence one, you know, just pay attention when you do to how I've connected uh, the notes. They go into an inverter and then a value module bias to one, um, and then they get attenuated to 6.036. And that's just what I found for the range that I was using. Um, there's also another value that is again inverted and, and placed over one this sets uh, sort of the the high range of the synth and then there's um, another value module on this page that goes to all of the uh, delay lines that sort of also help set the range so, so all of these things factor into keeping it as in tune as it is, which is not great, but it, tuning these delay lines is, is pretty um, tricky with the level of precision and the, the tools that are available. So just keep that in mind if you want to, you know, take a, a Car Plus Strong. Uh, synth. These also use, I should point out, 
um, two second delay lines. Uh, and again, that's just what I found worked when I was trying to come up with something that was attenuated correctly. Um, it might work better with four second delay lines. I didn't try that. I kept moving up from 10, uh, from 100 milliseconds to one second to two seconds. When I got to two seconds, I, I got pretty good tuning. I probably should have kept going up to four seconds and seeing if it got any better, but I didn't. Um, so anyhow, if you wanted to connect this to a sequencer internally to, to Zoya, um, you know, the, the connections are all there to be found. Just pay attention to how I've attenuated everything. Uh, or, you know, come up with your own better tuning. Uh, but I think it really shines when you pair it with, like, I'm using the arpeggiator on my bass station too. Just a really simple arpeggiation, but I can... And I would normally map this to MIDI. but I'm just getting this patch ready to publish and I don't want to add any um, MIDI controls that you may not want to use. The default for the patch is channel one. Um, so, you know, you can use an arpeggiator or a sequencer and just sort of play around with things. the patch so check it out I hope you like it oh I forgot to mention after touches uh, mapped to decay so if you have a controller with after touch you can have notes ring out longer thank you